From Hollywood to sports to civil rights, Korean Americans have had a huge impact in the US. It's as if Korean culture has always been a part of America. But in reality, the Korean community has endured war, exclusion, and famine to make it in this country. So let's look at the three most significant ways of Korean immigration to the US. Hawaii, land of beaches, luau's, tropical food, and some of the very first Korean immigrants to the United States. But why Hawaii? Well, there were both push and pull factors. First, the push factor from Korea. At the turn of the 20th century, famine and political turmoil forced people to leave their country for survival. Second, there was a pull factor from the US, the passing of the Chinese Exclusion Act in 1882. This was the first law that legally excluded a group of immigrants from the US solely based on nationality. The ripple effect of the Exclusion Act? A labor shortage. And these new Korean immigrants were tasked to fill that void. Some of the first Korean immigrants arrived as plantation workers. By then, the US had annexed Hawaii and was extracting its tropical resources. By 1905, more than 7,000 Koreans were in Hawaii to work on pineapple and sugarcane plantations. These Korean laborers experienced similar anti-Asian sentiments that led to the Chinese Exclusion Act, despite being of a completely different nationality. That is called racism. Not long after, the Immigration Act of 1924 set quotas on immigration from different regions. It favored a handful of countries from Western Europe and pretty much excluded all of Asia and Africa. During this time, Korean and Asian immigration took a nosedive. But then war changed everything. In 1950, the Korean War started. This was also called the Forgotten War in the US. Forgotten in part because it was overshadowed by big wars like World War II and the Vietnam War. But it certainly wasn't forgotten by Koreans. The second wave of Korean immigration is directly tied to this war. Like any war, the history is complicated, but it was basically fought between the US-backed forces in the South and the Communist China-backed forces in the North. The war resulted in the peninsula being divided into today's North and South Koreas. It also introduced the immigration of Korean war brides to America. They're women who marry American soldiers during a time of active service. The War Brides Act, which first came about during World War II, allowed these servicemen to bring their foreign wives, children, and adopted children to America. This meant that they were able to bypass that 1924 quota system I mentioned earlier, the one that limited immigration from Asia and Africa. The story of Cho Su Lee, a Korean American civil rights icon, also intersects with this history. I was born out of wedlock during the Korean War, and sadly for my mother, she was disinherited from her family. So she married an American soldier and left for America. Over a few decades, nearly 100,000 Korean war brides came to the US, as well as over 300,000 Korean adoptees. But even with the War Brides Act, the number of Korean immigrants didn't change significantly until the immigration quota was finally lifted. The Immigration and Nationality Act of 1965 replaced the quotas by country of origin. It expanded immigration preference to people who had families in the US or were considered highly skilled and educated workers. This bill says simply that from this day forth, those wishing to immigrate to America shall be admitted on the basis of their skills and their close relationships to those already here. The law transformed the makeup of America, including Korean America. From 1960 to 1980, the number of Korean immigrants grew from 11,000 to 290,000, an increase of more than 2,000%. But today, even though the racist immigration laws that shaped Korean immigration are gone, racism is not. Asian Americans, including Korean Americans, are facing a new wave of terror, a rise in Asian-targeted violent hate crimes. A 2022 report found that anti-Asian hate crimes increased by more than 300% in a single year during the pandemic. This fear-based violence is unfortunately reminiscent of an era leading up to the exclusionary immigration laws. But today, the Korean and Asian American community are coming together and demanding justice. If you want to learn more about Asian American history, I highly recommend you watch this documentary, Free Chosu Lee. There's more info in the links below.